Good morning. It's Wednesday, October 21st, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, And She Never Raised Her Voice. And our scripture is Galatians chapter 3. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. She was a mere five feet tall and a physically diminutive slip of a human being, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg left a big, wide wake during her journey through this life. She had a passion for people, particularly those on the receiving end of discrimination. And, as characterized by Margaret Carlson, she never raised her voice. Whether you agreed with her decisions or were more apt to view them as poison ivy, it was hard to dislike RBG. Born into a 1933 male-dominated world culture, Ruth Bader experienced the kind of dismissive attitude women have endured for many centuries. It led her, perhaps drove her, to a career calling of making sure the laws of our land put that dismissiveness in the garbage can. Some would argue the fallout from her work on five landmark cases relative to the 14th Amendment, Equal Rights for Women, went too far. Others might say the fallout is necessary and long overdue. Nonetheless, her brilliance is hard to diminish. She often highlighted her arguments by championing a male discrimination victim to make the point that discrimination against male or female under any circumstance is wrong. She got her message across without the vitriol and mudslinging which seems to characterize and even define the 21st century. Whether liberal or conservative in political thought, you must admire and long for the kind of respectful style RBG brought to the arena. In his remarks, a very conservative Chief Justice John Roberts called her a tireless and resolute champion of justice. She was the first female and first Jewish citizen to ever lie in state at the National Statuary Hall in the U.S. Capitol. As the memorializing began, her rabbi, Lauren Holzblatt, declared her life's work was expanding the we of we the people. The obvious inference is that women, children, LGBTQ, and others have long been constitutionally invisible, considering all men being created equal. Here's Rabbi Holzblatt's statement. Justice Ginsburg's life's work was to insist that the Constitution deliver on its promise that we the people would include all the people. This impressive life left behind a legendary body of legal work on behalf of those who had a voice but no opportunity to speak. She fully pressed her calling. Hardly in rebuttal, but rather in contrast, I would not characterize Ruth Bader Ginsburg's mission as single-dimensioned, that women have always been invisible, particularly in the eyes of God, who sees the stamp of His image on all persons. Truth be told, whether our voices may be, or even won't be, heard by the ears and hearts of human beings on earth, those voices are never unnoticed. God in heaven hears. A life like our BG's, well invested on behalf of the silenced, is more like a conversation in the holy thin places. God hears, and when God's spirit is moved like the time Moses heard the voice from the bush that burned, whole nations are apt to be turned on its ear. For you today, what about your calling? Do you speak for those who cannot? And if you do speak, do you find it necessary to raise your voice? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.